The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of my Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started for PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, roll the video. Oh, I love her. She's funny. Like, when's the last time they've had, you know, a, a, you know, a Disney heroine who's funny? She gets the one-liners. I love that. And not only that, but like the rhythm to it, of it sounded to me like these fast-talking 1940s dames. And it turns out that they were fashioning the character after Barbara Stanwyck, who I love. So then that was my inspiration for the voice as well. Because of Greek mythology being in the public domain, it's something that's always going to be retold and people are going to still watch these movies and these shows and read the books. One of the reasons why is because if you actually go and fucking read the stories from back in the day, um, they're not that easy to process and are also very misogynistic. But depend on that, that will be brought back up again. This is why Percy Jackson and the Olympians is so popular, but also it's part of the reason why Lower Olympus is so popular just as well. Greek mythology isn't going anywhere anytime soon because people will always find new ways to tell these stories in a different way because these stories will continue to be passed down to new generations and demographics. I will be completely honest, I would not know the story of Anna Karenina if I never read Anna K by Jenny Lee. I wouldn't know Shakespeare's The Twelfth Night if I didn't watch She's the Man and oh my opinions on this movie have changed so much over the years. I have fallen out in Greek mythology a while ago but then that Disney Jiu Jitsu cousin crossover happened and I saw that Megaro was paired up with Toji and it got me invested again. But more so, instead of Greek mythology as a whole, it got me invested in Megara's character and wanting to learn more about her. For those who don't know, Megara is a character that is in the public domain like the other Greek mythology characters. Therefore, that means people can take her character and do what they want with her. Most people who are familiar with Megara only know one version of her and that is the Disney version. And to be more specifically, the Disney version of Megara is a combination of her and another one of Hercules' wives, but we will only be talking about Megara because I have so many concerns with the way that other woman's story went, and this video is going to be long enough. We take a character that can be left up to different interpretations because of the limited information that we have on them. And I got some opinions about what Disney did with her in the 90s, and then again in the 2020s. Hey y'all, it's Harriana and I'm back with another video. Hi, hello, how are you doing? My name is Harriana. Welcome to, welcome back to The Pirate Ship, also known as Harry Hooks Pirate Ship. I am the captain, you were not my first date and I got the first bed because you wanna know why. Bring your ear close to the speaker so you can hear me clearly. Nobody's worthy of being the first mate. I still have my Toji's wife cosplay on right now. Oh, let me take the glasses off so you guys can actually see, but. I just, I need to get this done, um, did not have the energy to go ahead and take this off because I knew when I took this off I was not going to want to put this shit back on, but we are here to talk about Megara and why I think she deserves better and I'm talking about better in the sense of like what Disney ended up doing with her later on in the character, but also just like her original story and whatnot and the nuances that go into that. But before I begin, um, like actually giving my comments commentary the unscripted shit I want to include a section of this that is scripted about why I don't really have an issue with people wanting to retell these stories as in Greek mythology because these stories did not often treat the women well 
In ancient Greece, the portrayal of women in mythological as deceitful, manipulative, and the downfall of men corresponds with oppressive treatments and forced seclusion, such as mirrored Greek patriarchal society. Cultural portrayals of women in ancient Greek mythology is both a representation of and an influence of the treatment or place of Greek women within society. Men were in charge, women, even those in comparable status, were never seen as equal to their male counterparts. In part, this reality was due to the lessons imparted through instructional literature. There is no doubt that ancient Greek and structural texts were meant to keep elite men in charge. In fact, in the text examined above, not once do the women discuss having their own voices. All texts are written about men and only have male characters in them. The influx of feminist Greek myths into the mainstream market is nothing short of a literary movement. This demand for feminist interpretations of Greek myths not only shows how imperative it is for women's voices to be heard but also just how much a contemporary audience wants and needs to hear them there are more than just exciting new ways of retelling ancient stories they have become poignant in social commentaries women's voices being silenced by men feels all too familiar so finally reading narratives about female characters who have been silenced and ignored for centuries has a significance that cannot go unnoticed in an article for Stylist, freelance journalist Sarah Schaaf suggests that women are rewriting the canon, literally, by putting a feminist spin on classics from literature. The standard for this canon has been set by men, so retelling these ancient myths through a feminist lens can compile a new inclusive literary canon. Feminist retellings are not a dumbing down of Greek myths. They are interpretations that use forgotten voices to tell overlooked stories. It is essential for women to rewrite these myths to ensure that femin female characters receive equal representation in classical, mythological, and ancient worlds. When I started to learn about Greek mythology in school, it really bothered me with how the women in these stories were portrayed because it's as if they were just flat out terrible people or if they weren't terrible, they were literally being brutalized by a man to advance his story and everyone else's. S.A. and arranged marriage are two main plot devices used to advance women's storylines. Megara didn't even have a choice to marry Hercules. Her father literally forced her to be with him as a reward. I said literally like three times anyway. He saw his own daughter as a prize opposed to seeing her as a person. Shit like this is why I don't see an issue with people wanting to do more and better with the way the women's stories were told in these myths. While yes, it is important for stories like this to exist, they also are a product of their time. Greek mythology is notorious for telling the same story over and over and over again to the point where we legit don't know what to think of it because it reminds me of something that has to do with anime. While anime has many questionable choices made in their stories, we legit take so much of it for a grain of salt because we truly don't know how the people behind these works feel about society because they give us little to no background about who they are, why they created their work, and what they mean by it. When I mentioned that I, what Ayazawa did with Seji and Neighborhood Story can be read to be homophobic and also xenophobic, that's because there are very ignorant things done with his character on top of the fact that we don't know her views. That is why when people had talked about the transphobia problem with Paradise Kiss, they weren't sure what to think about it because we genuinely don't know how Ayazawa feels. Regarding the people who created Greek mythology, we barely know shit about who they are as people and how they treat others. Also, I would like to note that the main reason why a lot of these classic stories from back in the day, and I'd say like before like the 1700s, these mythological stories that we know about the fairy tales and whatnot, women were technically not allowed to read and write. They were just kind of there to serve their husband. So it was seen as taboo for a woman to create a story story. So yeah, the reason why so many of these old classics that we do need to keep retelling and keep going on because you know culture, yeah, we need these. These are important. But we also had to accept the fact that a lot of them are misogynistic because women had little to no input with being able to write these stories. Like it literally was seen as a crime if a woman wrote a book. I'm not even joking. We learned about this shit in class. Women were literally shunned for writing books. 
Okay, so when it comes to Megara, everybody really knows her more so for her being in Disney's Hercules. A lot of people know her as Hercules' wife and that's pretty much that was it to her. Yes, I know his name is Heracles, but we just gonna be calling him Hercules from this point because I, I called that man that, I'm always gonna call him that shit. But Hercules is a movie that I see is a more praise now than it was like years ago because I remember years ago, I used to see people drag this movie to hell and back. Now people like adore it. And I'm not sure if it's a rumor or not. I'm not sure that if Disney has officially greenlit this, but there is supposed to be a live action remake of the Disney version of Hercules. I have very mixed feelings about that because if the muses are white we gonna have a problem like the muses literally can't be white i don't give a fuck what nobody says because guess what gospel music is black people music white people don't know how to do gospel i'm sorry they just don't but anyways i wanted to sit here and talk about the movie hercules a little bit because we do have to talk about megara's character and her importance in this film and then we also have to talk about like what the fuck they ended up doing with her later because i have so many fat ass problems with it so disney's hercules is just basically a movie about Hercules they wanted to tell a story about a hero they wanted to tell a story about a man and his journey to become like a god and whatever the fuck that's just basically what it is it has a giant ensemble cast a cast full of very colorful characters I'm not even joking like the color palette for this movie is so bright and loud it's very beautiful but this film was a lot of people's introduction including myself to Greek mythology this is like baby's introduction to group mythology with the exception of like Percy Jackson. Honestly, that is a more proper baby's introduction to group mythology because guess what? Percy Jackson is way more accurate to Greek mythology than Disney's Hercules. Are we shocked? Absolutely not. It doesn't even make sense because Percy Jackson just falls under the Disney umbrella now and I am low-key not a fan of Percy Jackson that much anymore. I went through a really big Percy Jackson phase like back in 2020 but I'm just kind of like over it at the moment. I don't know if I care to watch the series or whatnot. I don't know. But if you are looking at Disney's Hercules from an enjoyment perspective not knowing Knowing any damn thing about Greek mythology it's a pretty solid film it just kind of feels like an original story if you ask me because they just ended up changing so many important dynamics within the story especially when it had to do with the family because guess what Hercules that is not Hera's baby that is Hera's stepson but okay okay Disney let's just run with that storyline but it's kind of just barely a retelling of Greek mythology as it's very inaccurate of the story of, of Heracles. This is just very much, I'm gonna take these characters and do something else with them because I can. And like I said, they have every right to do that because like I said, these characters are in the public domain free will but it's just one like choice that was definitely a choice that was made they made Hades the big bad instead of Zeus who's like literally a dickhead that was a big choice that they made and I feel like them making Hades the main villain kind of like contributed to like a very questionable decision that was made later on with Megara's character that we're gonna get into but as I mentioned earlier when I said when I say Megara deserves better I mean that in two different ways one way is me talking about how she is treated in the story by the men that she is surrounding by and it's important to tell stories like this but the other is just me talking about what Disney did with her character specifically what they did to her a few years ago opposed to what they have done in the 90s because what they did with her in the 90s is a bit groundbreaking when it comes to like Disney heroine um you know points there's still a lot of work that could have been done with Megara's character because we do have to you know accept the fact that she still is very conventionally attractive yada 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 but when it actually comes to like personality that was a step up so I want to go in more detail about me saying Megara is conventionally attractive. I would like to elaborate on that because when it comes to Disney heroines, they got a certain look to them. I'm going to read you guys a piece from Feminism Sales as long as it behaves. Can Disney princess films ever truly be feminist? A succession of princesses followed, from book-obsessed Belle to a just-as-good-as-a-man Mulan. These female protagonists were exactly what the audience of girls growing up in a culture steeped from feminist change needed. An autonomous woman who still fell in love with the handsome prince and became a princess because why can't a woman have both? While on the surface, this is 
is a new cookie cutter image of a feminist princess erasure Disney cashed in on empowering feminist movement and dodged criticism for its historical passive female characters. It was clear in many ways that the Disney princess formula will continue to portray a certain type of woman and certain happy ending to audiences. In any context, the patriarchal structures ingrained in society will continue to disminiate one idea which inherently champions others. Any decision to include intersections that go against the grain will be met with backlash from those who perpetuate these structures and this could lead to alienating a large portion of the population and thus impact revenue. To keep a flow in the climate is to follow suit what sells. Feminism sells as long as it behaves and looks to other ideals of patriarchal society. It is not on us to feel guilty for enjoying the happily ever after, but it's important to continue to challenge and break down the structure which limits how far Disney will go. It is on a large corporation to continue whether normal means the same as right and what more they can do to change their audience's perspectives of what normal is. Also, you know, thinking about respectability politics and all of that, people sit and say that Megara is a Disney princess and Disney likes to parade her as if she's a Disney princess, but she's not. And I really do feel that her behaviors and the way she carries herself has to do with why she's not on the official lineup. So regarding Hercules and the original story of him and Megara's relationship, it is a big step up for what Disney had done with her later on, but it is kind of annoying because Disney also just totally completely rewrote her and Hercules' love story, which I can understand why they did so, but at the same time, it's just Disney's version of Hercules. Let me tell you, that character right there, it's not accurate. If you actually want to know how horrible he is, I'm going get there later on but you can also just look it up <laughs> and i'm gonna be honest when i actually learned what megara's fate was like in the original story it forever changed the way i see the relationship with her and this man here because it's regardless of them changing hercules and her relationship it's just them changing hercules overall to begin with because he was not a good person but if you guys do not know in the original myth she basically was like sold off to him basically there was a battle and Megara was seen as a prize for Hercules we're gonna bring that back out put a pin on that she was basically kind of seen as like property and back then because you know we have this thing called patriarchy a lot of men did view women as property a lot of men viewed their own daughters as property just as well but basically, because there is a lot of shit going on, Hercules accuses Megara of cheating. He thinks that their kids are not his children, and then he shoots her. And then that's pretty much the end of Megara. There isn't really much else to her. All we know that she was put in an arranged marriage for Hercules. She had no type of say in her life. And then the man that she was forced to marry ended up, you know, shooting her. And then there's other iterations of Megara's story where people say that she ended up living and she ended up going off and marrying another man. Megara Loki kind of doesn't exist outside of men. It's kind of frustrating. But anyway, she ends up marrying another man. There's other people that said that she didn't get shot at all and she still ends up in going off with another man. Either or, she doesn't necessarily have the happiest life here, but there isn't really much to her when it comes to the original Greek myth. We don't really know much of anything about her personality. That's why Disney was like, you know what? Let's actually take this character that just kind of has really nothing much to them and actually give her some pizzazz. Now, I personally am not bothered by all of the rewriting that they have done for Megara because they ended up making her one of my most favorite Disney characters ever. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I can relate to her on like numerous aspects and whatnot, but she's like a damn good heroine because a lot of Disney heroines can end up just being very fucking frustrating and whiny or just bland. And Megara is literally a hot fucking mess and that's why we adore her so much. But when it comes to the way they just rewrote Hercules, I'm just like you know what I'm just gonna have to sit here and pretend like this is his own thing because it is his own thing but they changed so much about that man including the relationship that he had his to his wife had a whole generation of people tricked into thinking he was like great <laughs> they also had us tricked into thinking that Zeus was great too absolutely fucking not but 
you know how you have those things that when you finally learn something about them and then you go back to it and you're forever changed with how you view it? I'm gonna be completely honest. When I learned that he shot her in the original story, it made me look at this entire movie differently because how did we end up getting that so far removed? Because this man is a menace. This man's a menace. And I remember when I was in high school and we ended up learning a lot more about the story of Heracles and whatnot. Our teacher even told us the Disney version is inaccurate. Y'all are gonna learn how he actually was here. I felt a little bamboozled, not gonna lie. <laughs> it's just Disney. Why are we pretending that this is a good guy? He was fucking trash. <laughs> but like ignoring how much Disney just kind of rewrote Hercules to the point where the only thing that was pretty much the same about him had to be with his relationship but also his super strength and who his daddy was who his pappy was specifically because Zeus I hate Zeus I'm sorry <laughs> it's a pretty damn good film like when you sit here and ignore how inaccurate it is to Greek mythology it's basically Greek mythology fan fiction if we're being honest isn't that just what Percy Jackson is too but moving forward when we're talking about the movie of Hercules, was there any kind of issue that I have with Megara within the story? And technically no, but after the movie ends, it does leave you with like so many more questions about her because it's just like, okay, we know about this woman. We know that so many of the men in her life have failed her in the present and in the past, but why is she like this? What's going on? While I think Megara is a great Disney heroine, I do feel like some things with her story could have like been improved because they were just very much vague with so much of her writing. It's kind of like Princess Tiana all over again. You have a great character but because of the story they are put in it just raises more thoughts about because Disney just left the audience with so many open-ended questions about her like they do for so many of their other heroines which we're going to get into later. And I understand it because so much of Disney movies can be left up to interpretation. It's often how we the audience feel about them and I do kind of appreciate how Disney kind of gives us that power when it comes to their characters but also that is what leads into the like the next problem we're getting into in a minute but I just have more questions about Megara at the end of Hercules like literally who was that man that left her where did she even really fucking come from we don't really know shit about her family or if she even really has one. And all we really know about her and Hades is that she's technically his slave and they just can't fucking stand each other. The entire dynamic with her and Hades was just a little confusing to me, but I digress. So many people, including myself, we were very much like, you know, curious to know more about Megara because Disney ended up creating a groundbreaking heroine, you know, by their standards. We have seen other characters like Megara and other media we've been in, but this is groundbreaking for Disney. So 20 years later, we ended up getting more answers when it comes to Megara's story. And I'm gonna be honest, it, it failed her. <laughs> oh shit. Like I had said, Megara ended up getting a Twisted Tale book and I have very much mixed opinions on it. And when it comes to giving the rating for like, you know, on Goodreads, when it comes to like five stars, I ended up giving it two because I was just very unsatisfied with what was done with the writing for Megara because she didn't even necessarily feel like Meg. I feel like the person who wrote her didn't have a full understanding of her purpose, but we're gonna get into that a little bit later after I bring up my other points. I have very mixed feelings on it but like keep in mind that this book came out in like 2021 and Hercules ended up coming out in the 90s. Therefore the same people who worked on that book did not work on the film. You know the original Megara. There is like such a big difference when it comes to her characters and it has to do with a lot of that time shift. I feel like part of the reason why Tiana's book was better mainly because First of all, um, Tiana's book, there was not that much time in between The Princess and the Frog coming out and that book coming out. But also I feel like the person who wrote for Tiana truly did understand her. The person who wrote for Megara was also writing for so many other Disney princesses. And a lot of other people have mentioned that the me the writing that she had done for the other princesses was a bit messy too just as well. And also I feel like the Hercules series that was asked, I was not a fan of it. She was barely in it. it gave us some answers about Meg. But here the book is just fully about her. 
we gonna get there because it wasn't even about her at one point. Bro, it ended up giving us a backstory about Megara and her family. And that is one of the things that I actually did like about the book. We ended up learning that her dad is basically fucking Jagged Stone, a fucking deadbeat dad. He didn't care about his daughter. He did not care about his wife. He just basically walked out on them. He didn't want to take care of them. So Megara basically had it hard growing up. And it just kind of goes into that thing where so many people are like, oh my gosh, a woman in pain, horrible child yada 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 I get it I understand why telling those type of stories are important but it was just kind of like oh my gosh this is so typical stereotypical everyone has this yada 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 but it really was interesting to see that like men failing her so early on in life really did affect a lot of the relationships she had with other guys going on in her life especially when she was in adulthood it did make more sense about why her and Hades had that type of dynamic just as well with them just bickering and being bitchy to one another I also also really like that we got to learn a lot more about her mother we learned that Megara learned to like read and write for the sake of her like being able to get through because she knows like she really can't depend on anybody but herself and she also ended up seeing her mother pass away very much tragic so I did have a lot of sympathy for Megara's character but that is honestly where the story peaks the story peaks when we learn more about who her parents were everything else is not good mind you a lot of these twisted tale books are said to be retellings up until a certain point when it comes to you know the overall story because in tiana's book it basically rewrites the last fourth of the princess and the frog basically princess tiana ended up making that deal with dr facilier and she ends up getting her restaurant her day is brought back to life yada 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 this shit right here that it's not a retelling because it literally takes place all the way at the end of hercules it's a sequel it's literally just a fucking sequel go ahead and call it that it's not a retelling because how the fuck you gonna retell the last minute of the movie you can't. That is a sequel, boo. But so much of the writing from Megara's character really frustrated me and I couldn't necessarily put into words what it was about her that irritated me and I ended up finding a good a few Goodreads reviews that summed up so many of the overarching problems that I had with it and I'm going to include some here for you guys to read. But this version of Meg is an insult to her character. This book was her quest to become a god, but everything went right for her. When shit hit the fan, she could fix it. She just knew how to do everything from using a boy to play a flute so well, but put service to sleep. What irked me most of all too was her reckless behavior. Meg is smart, not hot-headed, and quick to make stupid decisions. As for the plot, it was just weird and all over the place. The gods helping her out was an interesting touch, but the conversations felt still and awkward. Just none of it work and in truth Meg would mostly have died due to the quest she had did and would never made it to Hades but the plot had deuce as Machia after do as Machia to make everything just fall into place for her in the most unrealistic way possible with no smooth transition. Well that was disappointing. I had high hopes for this one for two reasons. First, I adore the movie Hercules. Second, I read the Mulan retelling for the series written by Elizabeth Lim and loved it. I hope this one will be just as good, but it wasn't. The writing is not good. It reads young, much younger than in the Mulan retelling, but also it's sort of clumsy. Lines and nicknames and attitudes were all lifted from the movie, which meant they didn't really fit in with the story around them. The rest is that he said this, then he said said did this and then she did that sort of thing which grates on my nerves then there be a wonder boy or it's been a real slice thrown in an attempt to capture Megara's saucy personality needless to say it didn't work the good thing here is that I read an arc rather than spending money on it because if I had I would pretty be pretty annoyed right now damn that's mean more annoyed than wasting my time trying to give this one a chance Meg is one of my favorite, if not absolute favorite, Disney princess, so I was beyond ecstatic when I found I'd been approved for this review copy, but after reading the book and being let down, I'm starting to wonder if they made this book a bad match for me. Taking a character developed and written by someone else and trying to copy their voice and thought processes is always going to be difficult, but when pulling from fairy tales or older Disney movies, authors can be really successful because the source material isn't centered around character personalities, but the idea of character attributes 
if you write a selfless, polite, hardworking character, people will read that as a believable Cinderella. If you write an intelligent, ambitious, yet polite character, people will buy that as Belle. Meg, in my opinion, is the second Disney leading lady given an actual personality and remains to be the most distinctive Disney character voices, so I didn't enjoy Go to Distance. I'm not sure if it's entirely the author's fault. I'm sorry, I couldn't pronounce her last name right now. In a rush, we gotta get this finished. Hercules as a film has always felt like one of the most distinctive Disney movies. While I likely wouldn't have enjoyed this book as much if it was focused on Hercules, I do think it would have been a lot less frustrating because he's really only character an author would be able to project onto without the story feeling wrong. Meg, Phil, and Hercules all are too unique and established to be recreated in a way that feels like a realistic extension of the source material. So while I think Kyle Latina's plot ideas were interesting her exploration of them consistently felt off I love the Twisted Tale series but any of them come from this author that feels flat Meg is one of my all-time favorite Disney characters and this just wasn't the Meg I know and love the references to Greek culture felt forced and didn't blend in well with the story and the storyline itself wasn't very interesting pretty disappointed with this addition to the series Ack, where to begin a. Megara's snarky character was changed into a lustig Disney princess. B. Hera is the big bad of all the Olympians and she and Megara are meant to have similar personality. Snarky and wickedly intelligent. She is as dolce as a lamb with the golden fleece. C. Hercules is his father's doormat. He is casually taken down to the Titans and he couldn't even have a proper spare with Zeus. Really. D. What the fuck happened with Hades? And there hardly anything with pain and panic. Really, Disney? Hades was much better in Descendants 3. E. Hades is not the villain. He just got screwed over by his brothers Poseidon and Zeus holding a grudge. It's completely logical, but no one ever gives him that. A lot of us had the same ongoing talking point when it came to our frustrations with the book. And we were like, baby, that wasn't Megara. That was Megan. I don't know who this was because of the way that this book depicted Megara, it's like they took her funny one-liners, they took some of her sarcasm, this and that and the third, but they wrote her to be like this very insecure and a bit kind of fragile and dainty woman. What happened to the the Megara that was in the original? I'm gonna get there because I'm gonna leave that point for later because that shit is the reason why I like her so much with Toji when it came to that JJK crossover shit. The reason that we love Megara so much and why so many of people consider her to be a Disney princess is because she was nothing like your typical Disney princess. At that time period, like Hercules came out in the 90s, the closest princess in comparison to Megara was Jasmine and that's not saying much but also I have very strong opinions about the way Disney had wrote that girl. That is another topic for another discussion because my issues with Jasmine and Disney have so much to do with adultification. I really feel like um brown women should talk more about Jasmine but I will be very open to expressing my frustrations with the way Disney portrayed that girl. But but I'm like, when it comes to like a Disney princess kind of being a bit different, the only other person, the only like official princess we had at that time period was Jasmine. This was before Mulan. This is just pretty much all we had at this point. So Megara was a big deal. And when we talk about Disney's Hercules, one of the most memorable characters that everybody likes to bring up is Megara. We talk about the muses, we talk about Phil, a lot of people don't actually give a flying fuck about Hercules. We like this iteration of Hades because he's funny as hell, but Megara is what sold this movie for so many people. You look on Letterboxd and people that didn't necessarily care for this film all this much, one of the main reasons they like it was Megara. Hi! I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous, but the reason Megara is so well liked is because she is in fact similar to Toji Fushigiro. She's kind of bitchy and brash and that's what we liked about her. That's what made her great. She was a bit kind of unhinged. She wasn't your typical Percy Disney princess. We love the fact that she was different. We love the fact that she could, didn't necessarily have a filter. We love the fact that she would come out and say exactly what was on her mind, not realizing that what she was saying could have got her in trouble. We saw some of that in the book, but then overall, it just really was very contradictory because the characterization for her was like super all over the place. And honestly, this book was all over the place too. It was very much sloppy because I actually am gonna bring up how later on in the book, 
there is an entire section dedicated to like Hades and Persephone and I'm like boo if you wanted to write a Hades and Persephone book you could have just said that. That is a point I actually have brought up later but that is something that was, I was just itching to say because it pissed me off so bad. She was kind of like a female Toji Huji girl type. Homeless, very much irritated all the time, a bit bitchy, a bit brash. The way they wrote her was so different in this book and it was just frustrating because I was just like, okay, I went from loving this character to not being able to fucking stand her. So much of it just has to do with her being mischaracterized. When knowing the origins of Megara's story and seeing what Disney did with her to expand upon her story but then realizing that where there were just so many open-ended questions still there left with her, it's just giving me this entire thing that I ended up picking up on when we ended up learning about Greek mythology in high school and why we waited so late to learn it. And it's just like this the, the, these type of stories are just not meant for like a younger audience if we want to tell them authentically and tell the full thing. Because Greek mythology is not for the faint of heart. When it comes to Greek mythology, I love to see more people retell Megara's story in their own way. But like I said, she's in the public domain. Y'all can do what she wants with her. There are so many women in these myths that deserve to have many retellings as the men out here. And I like what Disney did with Megara in this film, but I strongly dislike what they done with her in this damn book. And it just also might have to do with the fact that this book was technically written for YA. And I don't think YA works for the age range of all of these characters. These characters are pretty much adults. They're like in their 20s and older. And that frustrated me so much because this is another thing that I have always had a bit of a pet peeve with when it came to Disney. But like a lot of problems that I have with like animation in general is somebody has said something about how I can't stand the adult characters in here and they literally act like they're like sophomores in high school. It is deeply frustrating and that was so many of the problems that I had with this book right here. So much of the dialogue was just kind of childish and silly and over the top but like I said it's Hercules that is the nature of what Disney's Hercules is. It's just very frustrating because I'm like I know all of these people are grown but they are giving sophomore in high school with their actions and their dialogue and the way they are going about things. Especially Megara because she's seen even though this movie takes place after Hercules, everything that happened in the film, why does she feel so much more immature here than she did then? Like I have mentioned that if we want to tell the stories of Greek mythology truthfully and do them justice, I just don't think we need to keep trying to push this for a younger demographic if we want to be more focused on these characters. When it comes to Percy Jackson, those are like literally the children of all the gods and goddesses and all that. That's different. That's a whole nother thing because a lot of those are just like original freaking characters that they made that are like offsprings of all that. It's literally descendants. But over here, we are actually dealing with the real fucking characters, the real deal. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. But looking at all the horrifying shit that goes into the Greek mythology that all of these characters will put through, especially Megara. New adult me, please. New adult me, please. I am somebody who just, I have grown, outgrown YA, by the way. Like I said, I'm getting older. I'm in my 20s, literally fitting in the new adult demographic. This just is a book that I felt like needed to be written for older people in order for it to be better because it ended up just making all the characters feel extremely childish and it was just annoying. I hate to say it, but this actually might be one of my worst books that I have read so far in 2024. And I don't like that because I went into this book wanting to like it. I love Princess Tiana. Y'all know I talk about her all the time. So I wanted to read more other Twisted Tales books. This book pissed me off so bad. That's the reason why I ended up making this video. Because if we're, going to, we're going to keep telling Megara's story in different ways and doing more with her and this and that and the third. Can we actually do it truthfully and give her justice? Because I'm just like, okay. Disney wanted to expand upon this story of a woman that we all really adored. And then once we get that, it's just very much lackluster. But like I said, I think it just has to do with the fact that this person just wanted to write this book for a younger audience and therefore they ended up kind of like messing up Megara's characteristics because she's, like I said, she's one of the most mature Disney heroines too, mainly having to do with her story and the way she carries herself. But like I said, she comes from Greek mythology, very dark storytelling. I love what Disney did with Megara in that movie, but I strongly dislike what was done with her in this damn book and I just really feels like it has to do with the fact that the person didn't fully comprehend her the way 
the people in the 90s made her. And that's okay. Things happen, yada, yada, yada. But I'm like, listen, new adult me now, please. Like, this, mm, no. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I am so fucking tired. But yeah, we got it done. I appreciate you. I really don't have much else to say. I don't really have any announcements. I have some cute cosplay stuff coming up. I have these lashes that I'm wearing right now. They're actually going to be at to my shop. They're called Maki. I don't know if you guys can see them, but they have like green on them too. So that is like my cute little self promo that I'm doing there. I really was filming this Toji's wife cosplay. Okay, it's really cute. I really like this hair. It's okay, y'all. The wig is giving like Alice Cullen. It's giving Alice Cullen. And you know, if you made it to this point in the video, comment Toji's wife. Comment Toji's wife, because let's get that engagement going on. All right. But thank you so much for watching this video. I deeply appreciate it truly do deeply appreciate it because i've been going through it i'm so fucking tired y'all i'm exhausted but yeah have a great day night whatever time of the day you chose to watch this video i'm just thankful that you watched it with the ads on all right thank you goodbye now now that you see you should be aware of the power of three they come to fight as fast as they can they're dangerous yet fabulous because the utonia made them is true they are the colors of pink green and blue They'll catch you in the blink of an eye And do it all before the time They coming through and fighting oh. And everyone they're shocking oh. You know no one can stop them all Because of the chemical oh. acts They coming through and coming through. And everyone they're shocking You know no one can stop them all Because of the Just blow your mind Buttercup like villains three at a time Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt And Blossom will lead them out of their rut Cherishing power puff two of a kind Both wanna save the world before bad times From Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA The Powerpuff Girls are just here to stay They coming through and fighting And everyone they're shocking You know no one can stop